sunk its teeth into Chicago, and it's a good night to be indoors. The question is, does number seven Pitt, led by Aaron Gray, want to be indoors with the unpredictable DePaul Blue Demons? From Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois, it's 10 and 6 DePaul taking on the seventh ranked and 14 and 2 Pitt Panthers. They're trying to snap the Blue Demons' nine game home court winning streak. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the building here just outside the city of Chicago. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside Coach Rick Majerus. And Rick, explain to me what's going on with this DePaul team. Very unpredictable indeed. They managed just 39 points in an early season loss to Northwestern. Then they bounced back about two weeks later, and they shocked the number five team in the country. Dr. Phil and Oprah together couldn't explain to you what's going on with this team, but I'll tell you what, they never give up. They're emerging as a defensive force. That's how they have won these last couple of games with a commitment to team defense, which is part and parcel of the Pitt Panther pride. Let's get right to Star Watch tonight. This clash getting set inside the Big East. It's the seven-footer Aaron Gray for Pitt, and DePaul counters with the forward Wilson Chandler. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Bereft of any centers in college basketball, the space seater Gray commands a point. Wilson Chandler gives you the old-fashioned three ball. He can get to the paint. He's an excellent rebounder on the offensive end, and he's sensational at posting up smaller opposition. He's got a well-rounded NBA game. That's why there's 11 of them sitting across from us tonight. Let's get right to the starting lineups now for DePaul. Sammy Mejia can be a game breaker. In fact, he's already had a 40-point game this season. For Pitt, LeVance Fields runs the point. And if DePaul fails to pick him up in transition, he can burn the Blue Demons just as he did Syracuse in the Carrier Dome last week when he poured in 24 points. Wesley Green, a big one, the junior wearing number four. And LeVon Kendall adds very strong rebounding the senior for Pitt. This telecast available in stunning high definition on ESPN 2 HD, presented by Olivia. It's number seven, Pitt, taking on DePaul inside the blue building here inside, just outside Rosemont, and it's Jerry Wainwright and his DePaul Blue Demons, his second season as the DePaul head coach, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jamie Dixon in his fourth year as the Pitt Panthers head coach, and of course his late sister Maggie Dixon served as an assistant coach for the DePaul women's team here before leading Army to the NCAA tournament before her tragic death. We are set for the opening tip. Great to have you along on a chilly night. Temperatures in the 20s outside in the Chicago area. It'll be green and gray to go at it. Pitt wins the tip as we get started here at Allstate Arena. The Paul's going to need all 15 fouls and three bigs, all 900 pounds of them to go against gray tonight. Gray trying to back down on green. His short jump shot will not go. So he misfires on the first one. Gray coming in, averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds, and the preseason biggest player of the year. Lately, he's just not getting to the foul line. That might be starting to concern Pitt just a little bit. And Dave, that's problematic of what happens because a good big gets 33%, a good five man, a center, gets 33% of his points in the post, in the paint. Green too long, although the rebound is tipped back to DePaul and Mejia with it. They'll have another crack at it. DePaul 7-0 here at All-State Arena. And it won nine straight on this court going back to last season. I, I got to amend that statement. It gets him at the three throw line. I apologize. Third swing it up top to Walker. Shot clock down to 14. DePaul will work it around that perimeter. That's going to be a turnover on the carrying violation. Jim Burr, Tom Loves, Ted Hillary, the officials tonight. Very good crew. And we go back to the last couple of games. And look at Aaron Gray, just eight points. But look at the free throws, coach. Just six efforts. He's got to want the ball more in the paint, and they've got to go into him. Now, in all fairness to him, Syracuse played primarily all zone. Very few possessions of man-to-man, -man, and South Florida did as well. Fields off the fake, giving it up, but Pitt finally gets their opening basket. Mike Cook able to knock it down. The 6'4 junior out of Philadelphia. And a good shooter, about 57%. Transfer from East Carolina was a walk-on, recruited as a walk-on. How about that guy played high school point guard? But he had gone for the lob, a little miscommunication there. It was Chandler already under the basket when that one sailed past the baseline and out. So it's two quick turnovers here for DePaul. Right now, this pace favors the Panthers. 
It favors their bump body bang defense. They touch and grab you. As long as this game's in the half court, the Paul's going to have to do what they've done to beat teams like Kansas. Get it in the open floor. Ray gets another touch. Clearly they're going for him. Chandler reaches in and fouls him. Trying to double team in the first couple of minutes. DePaul looking pretty sluggish. And it's a six o'clock local start, so not many fans in the building at the moment. You think a little bit slow to arrive here at the dinner hour. Chandler's a guy they can ill afford to lose. Mejia tipped it. Cook got it back and then threw it away. Watch Mejia's eyes. You steal a ball with your eyes. He's very attuned to watching the play develop. He's anticipatory with his eyes to the steal. Walker walking it up the court. DePaul coming in 10 and 6, 1 and 1 in Big East play. But they're 8 and 2 since December 1st. So their play has been pretty crisp. Is Gray short? Here's Fields at the end of the key. Gray will turn and push it up one handed and he gets the roll. That's what he's got to do. He's got to want that deep catch. He should look at a three point call by a referee as a good turnover. Aaron Gray should. Shooting about 62% for the season. And clearly he's the main target. Way downtown. A long bomb by Marcus Hurd. And off the mark. 4 0 pit. And shooting against Levine Kendall with a hand straight up. One of the things that constitutes a bad shot when you're challenged, particularly so vertically. Fields around the Kendall screen. Kendall wanted it back, open at the key. Good ball movement as Graves goes to the baseline. It's Fields open. He has kind of an awkward looking shot. He pulls it behind his head. Foul on the play will go against the Pitt Panthers here. Gray, 4 0. Pitt in the early lead. Well, Vance Fields is kind of feast or phantom with that shot. We saw him at Syracuse where he really strung him out. He has that corkscrew effect to it, though, and that doesn't bode well for when you're not dropping him right down. He doesn't get the shooter's touch. So DePaul has yet to crack the scoring column here. As Walker has it well outside. Chandler's quite dangerous. He's averaging 16 points a game. He can be explosive. It's Green again, and this time it'll go for the big guy. Wesley Green, the 6'9 junior, weighing in at 295 and a nice shooting touch there. And in addition to that shooting touch, he can put it on the floor and go by as well. When Gray tries to move up on next time, he'd be smart to take him off the dribble. Wainwright certainly doesn't like the scoring pace too much. It took three and a half minutes before they got a bucket. Kendall on the baseline, but no basket as he's fouled before the shot. Let's go back to Wesley Green, though. His nickname, Hollywood. And he's from Eustis, Florida. Here we go. Takes that shot. He's got two men's so separation. A hand in your face doesn't bother you. A hand up bothers you. A hand in your face, good shooters almost welcome that. A hand up makes you change the trajectory or the release of your shot. His father, Kenny Green, played in the NBA for Washington and the 76ers. He was a college star at Wake Forest, you may remember. Pitt will turn it over. Fields loses the handle. That's their second. It's a very soft scoring pace early. There's a traveling violation. Back over to the Panthers it goes. And we have a timeout on the court with Pitt in the early lead. 4-2 at DePaul. presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. A January night here in the beautiful city of Chicago. Pittsburgh has the lead. 4-2, let's go inside to play in the position of Aaron Gray. Here you see him transitioning on the floor, and as you see him starting to run right here, he'll take a good look at Green covering him. Now, right here, we're going to freeze it. You see him getting that deep catch right there. Green has absolutely no chance unless he bodies him out right here. He can't let him get that deep, and Gray does a great job of sitting down in the post and does a wonderful job of playing to his dominant shoulder, his left shoulder, on that hook. Well, DePaul, as mentioned, is already knocked off a top 10 team, number five Kansas at the time. How about another one tonight and our Majerus musts if they're going to do it against the Pitt Panthers? DePaul rotates three point guards and playing point guard by committee is a tough task. They'll have to make good decisions. They're going to have to shoot the ball especially well in transition and so far I've loved their shot selection. Defending Gray in the post, they're going to have to take all 15 fouls and body him out, not let him get the ball deep. 
and then they're going to have to make sure that they rebound with this team. It's going to be imperative because Pitt is a great rebounding team on the offensive glass. They've got to body him up and get a body on him. Yeah, Pitt, by the way, just 13 and 0 without rebounding their opponents this season. Fields. That one just spit away from him off his own hand. He lost it. Nobody touched it. I mean, he is a very good defender. He gets a hand in, a hand on you. Sammy, a preseason selection of the All Big East team, as was teammate Wilson Chandler. This is Green out high. He is gray on him. The two big bodies to be doing some banging tonight here just outside Chicago. Backing down is Marcus Hurd outside for Walker. He leaves the long one short. Rebound tipped to Graves. And here come the Panthers. Pitt has been ranked as high as number two this season. Tipped out of bounds. Going to be off the ball. Pitt will have it. Going to bring on a shooter as well. And Ronald Ramon. And Sam Young, the 6'6 sophomore. As Fields and Kendall will step off here for a moment for Jamie Dixon. DePaul showing 2-3 in the end out. But when they do go man to man, they've got to body gray out. They can't let him. They've got to beat him to the spot. They can't let him establish so low a close catch. He's too dominant with his size. The pull up pop by Graves. It's going to fall in for him and a three pointer as well. Antonio Graves, the 6 3 senior out of Mansfield, Ohio. And the most experienced guard for the Panthers. They open up a five point lead. Green, nice swing underneath Hurd. An excellent job getting to the other side of the rim for the reverse. Good call out of the timeout by both coaches. Both coaches had something there. Ramon handling the point with Fields on the bench for the moment. Here's Cook. As mentioned, that transfer from East Carolina. Ramon, his first attempt. He's a very good shooter at 44% beyond the three point arc, but misfires here. He sets himself to shoot Dave as well as anyone in the college game. Watch how he aligns his feet on the catch, and he has an extraordinarily quick release, which begins with foot organization. Green went up and, in fact, walked with it. Four turnovers now for DePaul. A two Big 12 heavyweights battle next on ESPN2. Number 10, Oklahoma State, taking on number six, Kansas, at Allen Fieldhouse. Kansas has won seven straight. Oklahoma State on a four-game win streak. Aaron Gray hitting the bench. At least momentarily here for Pitt. So Jamie Dixon has his big man out, averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds per contest. We'll see nine pit players tonight. Three sophomores, three juniors, three seniors. He has a nine-man rotation, which is very difficult to play to, in my opinion. But he does a terrific job of it. Benjamin fouled by Braylon Burns there. As Keith Benjamin went to make his move, Burns picking up his first. Benjamin's nickname K Rucker because he started playing hoops as a 14 year old in New York City's famous Rucker Park, which has produced a lot of good talent. Herman Helicopter Nolings, the GOAT, Earl Manigault, those are names the public will never hear, but they are New York <laughs> legends. I mean, sure up any book, yep. you can't find guys in playgrounds anymore. AU Bowl has changed all that. He used to have the Dirt Bowl down in Louisville. Chandler able to save it to Walker. Shot clock at 14. Here's Mejia. Not there for him. The three-pointer missing. And Pitt getting the rebound on a hustle play on top nine to four. Just about seven minutes in. The tempo of this game is all Pitt right now. Slow, methodical, grind it. Measured. The Biggie style. There's Biggs. Tyrell Biggs with a miss. And an opening here for the Blue Demons. On the baseline, terrific move there by Mejia. Draws the contact, he'll go to the line to shoot two. But the crowd wanted the roll and a potential three-point play. What I like best about this is he was looking for the pass all the way up and then accelerated with a terrific change of pace. He has really developed a nice change of pace to his dribble in the attack area on the foul line extended. 
four rebounds already. Sometimes you forget about Sammy Mejia in a rebounding fray. He's six six. But he can clean that glass. Jabari Curry coming on here for DePaul. As Mejia has another one coming. This, by the way, his 100th career start in a blue demon uniform. He's one of those guys who feels like he's been around forever. <laughs> And, and you know what, why you think that? Because he's played so well. He's been consistent in terms of his game and developed, as we saw there, that change of pace dribble is not part and parcel of his package in his freshman sophomore year. Ramonga shut down. Everybody in the building wanted a walk. Instead, there will be a foul here. That will go against the Pitt Panthers on top 9-5, to five, but very little scoring in the early minutes. Foul against Biggs as he picks up his first. So DePaul to walk it up. Jamari Curry taking the point. The sophomore out of Detroit. Mejia, who can be so explosive. That jump shot misses. So right now, Mejia not finding the range, and DePaul does not have a go-to guy at the moment. Benjamin drives in. Quick step. Great feed to Biggs underneath for the easy deuce. Paul's in some trouble right now. They've got to get this game to where they're at the, in the open court. And they've got to do it perhaps defensively with a little bit of press or extended defensive pressure. 0 for 5 now from three-point land as Clark can't get it to go. And the Panthers own the glass. Nothing from beyond that arc yet for the Blue Demons. Fields getting back in running the point. Biggs again is open and missed it all. Could not have been more open. Hit on top 11 to 5. On either side shooting lights out here in the first half. Burns starts his move. Double up. The kick out for Curry. Nicely swung inside from Mejia. He was looking for the foul too, but he'll take the basket. See, when you get to that third side like that, and later in the clock, you're not attacking the teeth of the defense, and you're making the defense shift so you avoid the help. Mejia with five boards already. Benjamin, very quick on the baseline, tried to reverse, and uh, he'll go to the line to shoot. And we have a timeout just outside Chicago. DePaul trying to keep that home court winning streak going, but they're falling behind against the Pitt Panthers, ranked number seven. We welcome you back just outside Chicago. It's Pitt on top of DePaul here, 11 to 7. And next week on ESPN's Family of Networks, student involvement of Spirit Week begins, promoting school spirit. If you're going to beat my defense, college basketball around the world. That is a problem. on display at ESPN and our family of networks. Great to have you along tonight. College basketball inside the Big East. Let's go inside to play for DePaul. Well, if you're going to beat the pit help side defense, you've got to have a component of passing, cutting, and spacing. So we're on the first side. We change to the second side. We get some pretty good ball movement here off of a draw and kick. And now we're going to go inside to Mejia posting up. And all of a sudden, you've distorted the help angles of the Panther defense. DePaul needs more shots like the one from Sammy Mejia moments ago. They're just three out of ten and 0 for five from three. Pitt has not trailed in the contest. And Benjamin will be at the line here. Keith Benjamin, the 6'2 junior out of Mount Vernon, New York. The Blue Demons don't get anything out of the post, Dave, and that's a problem. Now, your point guard by committee are primarily passing and caddying. So now your Drayline Burns and Mejia and those guys, they've got to find ways to score. Chandler. Chandler batting to the rebound, but out fought by Benjamin, who turns it over. A carrying violation to give it right back. You talk about a point of emphasis here. I'm going to tell you something. If your hand turns even perpendicular to the floor, they're going to call that carrying. Already seen a couple of those tonight. Yeah, it's been a point of emphasis all season. If you're just now starting to get involved in college hoops, you may be surprised to see a lot of those calls. Curry getting it back to green. He gets a lot of attention after hitting a long-distance shot early in the contest. 
Burns trying to back down, pulls up his double. Shot clock to 10. Green with the turnaround. Off the back iron, and it's Gray back in there, plucking away the rebound. Fields wants to push the tempo, but too much. Young is traveling with it. Now, there's two ways you can deal with a shot blocker or that height discrepancy. You can go to his body, or you can get that fadeaway with separation. I like going to the body and now getting some separation because as you get to his body, you immobilize him. I like body first, then separation, as opposed to that separation aspect that we just saw Green go. Do you like Green's footwork? Green's got quick feet. No, I don't. I like him to see him get angled more, and, and, and I'd like to see a little bit more of a shot fake. He's got to give Gray some problems here. I like his feet, but not his footwork. Well, how about Raylon Burns' footwork? And this I junior like, out of Milwaukee. And how about that ball movement, just as we had said? And they pulled Gray on the outside. Nice job by Green and Spacey. Well, the crowd wants the play to become a lot more fluid. Ramon with a three, and he answers. His play has been pretty choppy. Both sides with more turnovers than shots made. Pitt forcing the turnover. Here's Cook. He passed it right into the back of Young. And it bounced to Fields inside to Gray. No foul. Got it back. Missed that effort. He tipped it two more times and came up empty. I like the referee no call on that. But I really like the fact that Gray went back up. And he's got his play through. Look at how fatigued Gray is right now. The seven-footer carrying about 270 pounds. Chandler too long from the corner. DePaul to rebounds. Burns again. He's quick out of there. He punished Ramon. Took advantage of his size. Timeout. Pitt takes a timeout with a 14-11 lead. 8.48 left here in the first half. No. Well, the difference in this one is Pitt's Ronald Ramon, who buried a three-pointer moments ago. He's the native of the Dominican Republic, and he can fire a coach. Here we see a ball side small shooter in the corner. There is no better shooter in the gym tonight than Ramon Raymond, and you saw they came off of him, Drayline Burns did. You've got to stay home on the ball side small shooter in the corner. Here's a misdirection now play coming right back. Ramon trying to bounce for Kendall. High toss for Fields. Wilson Chandler made a, did a great job of switching out and saving a basket on Ramon on that timeout. Fields trying to dribble through some press. Underneath it's Gray to stuff it in. They swung it inside of the big guy, and Gray flushed it down to make it 16-11. He's got to play more with his body, Green does. He can't let him, you know, he's trying to get out and get around the front and post too high up. Play behind him, bang him, body him out. These refs will let you have some contact. They've shown that so far. Jim Burr, Tom Lopes, and Ted Hillary. They're going to let him play. Curry dribble drive, flips it up off the glass, and Kendall's there to clean it. He lost the handle on it, though. And Pitt will maintain possession here as it is out on Karan Clark. We'll see if the big fella, Aaron Gray, can start to heat up. He's a 62% shooter, mainly because of plays like this. Mattress and I am sleeping so much better. The Sleepy's mattress provides. Scott Reese with a Sports Center in game update. Over on ESPN, Duke playing its first true road game of the season. So far, not going too well. Georgia Tech leads at 22 19. Keep you posted there throughout the night. Also, Marquette and UConn, a couple of teams trying to right the ship here off the turnover. It's Jarrell McNeil taking it in, and the Golden Eagles up six midway through the first half. Dave? Scott, thank you. And a look at our Big East news and notes. And for Syracuse, a big night. Their 500th Big East game tonight at Rutgers. Providence off to a quick start. 2-0 in the Big East. Their best since the 0203 season. And Notre Dame upending West Virginia, snapping West Virginia's eight-game winning streak. That was last night in a tight one. And right here, Aaron Gray has had seven touches in the paint. Two for five, but he hasn't gone to the foul line yet. He won't go shooting that short mid-range jumper. Sometimes when you're that proficient with the jump shot, it's it's a it's not good for a big guy. Gray with six, Pitt with the biggest lead of the night at seven. And DePaul turning it right back over for the seventh time. The Blue Demons have been sloppy here on their home court, where they've actually played very well so far this season. 
Braves has five points jumping into the paint, flipping it up. Ray there to try and tap it back in. The ball looking to save it to right to Fields. Here's Cook. Shot clock at 15. Braves gives it up to Fields and he'll calm everything down here. Fields has got very good poise. Shot clock at five. They've got to hustle here. Here's Kendall. Sweet looking shot with his mom and dad in the crowd. They come to every one of his games regardless of where they are. And DePaul wants a timeout now because the lead has ballooned to 20 to 11. We check out stat track as this is the biggest lead so far for the number seven Pitt Panthers. Pitt's starting to heat up a little bit from shooting range. They're eight out of 16 from the field. The tempo of the game, the shot selection, everything favors Pitt right now. When you have that clutch and grab defense, and I say that affectionately, because I used to try to play it myself, when you're banging your body and you're bumping, you want a slow-paced game, particularly when you've got the biggest stick on the court, the seven-foot, 270-pounder, in gray. So a nine-point lead here for the Panthers. And look at DePaul now really scuffling to score the basket deep into the first half and they've been held 11 points. They've got no point guard scoring and they don't get anything inside. They've got a box and one note. Cook guarding Burns here who spins and fires. That's too strong and it's Gray with another rebound. So he has really come to life after both teams were sluggish in the early going. Ray another touch. Flips it up. That's going to roll off. Swatted away and here comes Burns on the attack. Right by Graves and he lays it in. 20 to 13. Now Graylon Burns with a shot of life here for the Blue Demons. He has six. Come right back to Graves. Get that ball right in at him again. Fields. Kendall set so many screens. He's so effective at moving out the ball for his teammates. Cook, bit of a wild shot there, and DePaul will attack. Walker off to Mejia. Really hasn't been hurt from very much here in the first half. But he is their top scorer at 16 points, seven rebounds per game. Chandler with a fadeaway too long. He had a tough time because Kendall's got such a size advantage on him and does such a good job of getting a hand up on a shot. Fields flipping it up with that very good left hand of his. He scored 24 against Syracuse in the Carrier Dome last week and a number of them on drives to the basket just like that. Chandler deep into the corner. DePaul overly reliant on one on one moves, getting their baskets that way. We saw quite a, a bit of that in Maui, coach. It did not work too well. No, they're going to have to utilize some more ball screens. And then in conjunction with that, they're going to have to kind of post up Chandler and get an inside presence with here and here. Away, but Pitt will maintain possession for 32 to play in the first half. And college basketball presented by KFC is on ABC Saturday at 3:30 Eastern with regional coverage. See either Tyler Hansborough and the number one North Carolina Tar Heels taking on Virginia Tech, or the Oklahoma Sooners facing the Texas Longhorns. By the way, the last time North Carolina was number one in the polls was 2001. When they won 18 in a row in Matt Doherty's first season as North Carolina head coach. And then we know what happened after that. <laughs> and Doherty's at now, so the method is doing a good job. Kendall at the head of the key. His Graves is awfully quick as it's swatted right back in his face. Four seconds on the shot clock. Pitt will maintain it, but they have to get it up quickly. I am so in love with Kendall in terms of his ability to move the ball, change the ball, and get other shots by screening. Young shooting. I should say Kendall over Butler that time. Did get it off in time. 22-13 Pitt. Mejia calling for it down low. 
to Chandler. He lines up the long one and drains it. Play the in out game. Go to the post. That's what you need to do. You can't post up your five, get your three, your two there. Get a post presence. That's the first three pointer that DePaul has made tonight. They're one out of seven. Coming at an opportune time, getting the crowd involved a little bit, a late arriving crowd here in Rosemont. I like what Wainwright's done. He's put Clay Scales off the bench on Ramon. Clay Scales is a high energy defender with great quickness. Boy, tough move by Antonio Graves, the senior, to flip it up left handed and quiet them here at Rosemont 24 16. He's understated in what he does. Graves is one of those sleeper guys. He's kind of a stealth attacker. You don't highlight him or yellow line him on the scouting report. Then all of a sudden at the end of the game, he's got basket. What a great job by Young off to Benjamin Sky for the stuff. And Sam Young with a tremendous play there to dive ahead and pluck it free. That means eight different Pitt Panthers are now in the scoring column. And on top by 10, Butler getting tangled up down low, has it knocked away from him. Hit to run. Graves off the fake, into the paint. Pull up, pop, not there for him. So efficient, Graves. Drives that closeout, he's decisive on that. Missed it, but you really like the shot. Good shot, excellent. You know, you applaud him. You're flashing for him and telling him to take another one. Mejia, lancing off the rim to Butler. Flips it down low, great eyes there. Chandler can't convert it though. Tangles up. And the possession arrow will keep it on this end. The ball ball with 2.11 to play here in the first half. Hus Husker. ESPN Nerve Center coming up on the halftime report. Scores and highlights from around the top 25, including Duke and UConn trying to rebound from rare losses. We preview Kansas, Oklahoma State later on ESPN2. And Tom Coughlin gets a stay of execution. We'll have more at halftime, Dave. Scott, thank you very much. The big man, Aaron Gray, pretty good half so far. As he has six points and three rebounds. Deep catches, gets the spot, low in the paint. Got that signature left shoulder turn hook. Right there, it reminds me of coming back to the future, big country. I'll tell you what, you look at them, they're one and the same. Nice shot block there by the country. And I'll tell you what, if you change jersey numbers and hairstyles, give that little buzz cut to grave, you'd think that it was big country, the return of big country. Now, the only thing I can fault Aaron Gray for tonight is not getting that three throw line. He must initiate more contact. As good as he is with that jump shot, he's got to find a home on the foul line to win big in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Brian Reeves was terrific his senior year, averaging 21 points a game for OSU, leading them to the 1995 Final Four and became the Grizzlies' first ever draft choice in the NBA. Cliff Klingscales, the junior out of Queens, handling the point here down the stretch of the first half for Jerry Wainwright. He's been like the Energizer Bunny to him. At the end of the Kansas game, Villanova game, he came in off the bench of Villanova. And you know what? In that three-guard rotation, the best thing the kid has done, psychologically, he's kept his head up and shown leadership. The ball in no hurry to shoot it, but the shot clock has dwindled down to five. And Clay Scales is fouled before the shot with a minute 41 to play before halftime. And Jerry Wainwright not delighted with much of what he has seen. A lot of the same looks on the face of his counterpart, Jamie Dixon, tonight, who has not been too pleased. I think that's just a coach's skull. Someone asked Bobby Knight that time about game face. Yeah. I can't make all those game faces Bob did, but I think that's the nature of the job, you know. You don't want to demonstrate satisfaction. Green and the opening, just a slight opening. That's all he needed. Wesley Green knocks it down. You think you call that backboard? Not me. 26-18. Benjamin has been lightning quick since coming off that bench. Here's Gray backing down on Green. Got it to go. See, Green's got to get low. Is ever low? He can't let that guy back into the paint on the second dribble. Your teammates absolutely have to offer some kind of help. You can't allow a big guy to put it down twice in the paint without a teammate digging, raking in there. Pit back up by 10. Less than a minute to play before halftime. Link skills off the handoff from Green. 
Deron Clark trying to weave his way inside. Gonna have a wild shot. Green could not finish it though on the rebound. His conditioning wouldn't allow him to do that. Boy, just 18 first half points for the Paul Blue Demons. Maybe not such a bad thing. And only four trips to the foul line altogether. It's been all pit. Tempo of the game. Blink scales with the theft. Green trying to pick it up. Went right over it. Three seconds left before half. Walker lays it up. He can't get it to go. Is that kind of half for DePaul? Jerry Wainwright's team down by 10. Their lowest first half point total was 17 against Kansas. But keep in mind, they rallied, came from behind, and won that game. Stunning the number five team in the country. We're at halftime here, just outside Chicago, and time for us to go to Scott Reese for the college basketball halftime report. All right, Dave, thanks so much. Good first half on the road for Pittsburgh, up by 10 over DePaul. Welcome in, everyone, to the ESPN Screening Room. I am Scott Reese. A lot of basketball to get to, including UConn and Marquette. The Huskies have lost back-to-back -back games. Marquette lost two out of three. Somebody needs to get well out in the Big East. Let's see. First half output of the season for the Pitt Panthers, but they have a 10 point lead over to Paul 28 18. Ready for the start of the second half. Dave O'Brien alongside Coach Rick Majerus and Coach Aaron Gray, the big seven footer, getting a lot of touches in that paint in the first half. Yes, she is. He got the ball 11 times in there and has been very productive. The only thing I would like to see is get the foul. Now let's take a look at how they're getting inside. Here we see Wesley Green playing them and the ball is coming inside. All right, as he's got the ball there, he's bending at the waist instead of at the knees. You want to be lower and leveraged. You want to sit underneath his butt and push him out. That's your only chance to be low and leveraged. Here, Mejia, right there, could have given some help, but he got caught in no man's land. He needs to come and rake up instead of swat down, and he needs to be available to help in that situation. So you got a no man's land, and you got your post player not leveraged. That's what happens. Mejia, by the way, with only one basket in the first half. It was a three-pointer. He's averaging 16 points per game. And over the last three games, averaging 23.6. And only four attempts, Dave. He's got to work harder to get some shots, and they've got to be more productive in finding them. At one point, DePaul cut the deficit to three at 14-11, but Pitt ended the first half with a 14-7 run and a 10-point lead. Butler opening up the second half in the lineup. Tipped out of bounds off of Pittsburgh and Cook. Back over to the Blue Demons, entering tonight's game, having won nine straight home games, dating back to last season. Their marquee victory this year came on December 2nd when they stunned Kansas to the first win over a top five opponent since 1999. Well, DePaul needing to make a run here to climb back into this contest, but tonight taking on the number seven team in the land. Butler turns, faces, and he's short with it. But another effort and a new shot clock here. Burns, he had six in the first half. Give him nine after the triple. And that's what they need, ball movement, patience, and the right guy shooting. Butler is not the right guy on those first two shots. Take Gray outside and screen. Make Gray defend screens out there, ball movement. So you look at what DePaul was doing in the upset of Kansas. They were not playing terribly well, but the second half, they were lights out. Sealed in there. Kendall way downtown. Off the glass and clanged away. That's out of his range. Mm -hmm. Kendall's an excellent shooter to 17 feet, but not in that situation. He's out 19, 18. So Pitt a little discombobulated here to open up the second half the way DePaul started the night. Pitt needs to put the hammer down early here. They don't want to give him life. Look at Chandler way, way downtown. In the parking lot with that one. With a hand outstretched against him by Pitt's test defender, Levon Kendall. Fields around the gray screen and dumped it back inside of the seven-footer. He lost it. It was off his leg and out of bounds. 
As we check out the first half stats, and you see the ball just one out of eight beyond the three point line. Yeah, they've been baited into some bad shots, and of those eight shots, six have been contested in my, in my count. You don't want to shoot with a hand up there, the hand perpendicular to the ceiling. The hand in your face doesn't bother you. That, and actually, good shooters like the great shooters in the game, Miller and those guys, Reggie, you know, they like that hand in the face. There's a comfort zone there. Hornacek really? and those guys. Yes, they did. Mm. I can't. It's inexplicable. Logically, it doesn't make sense. But the reality of it is, in fact, there. Shot clock down to seven. Burns sees it. Chandler, great fake to his right. And a foul on the play. Did not make the jumper, but he'll be shooting. Good middle game. He drove Kendall on the closeout. I've been waiting for him to do that. They feel Chandler can become a great player, not just a good player. A lot of it's because of the work he's put in on his body. A couple of summers ago, he could only bench press 110 pounds. Now he's up to 320 in the weight room. Oh, God. He's a multifaceted player, and you're right about that strength because that strength is given that middle game that we just saw, and it also gives him that rebound game in traffic, but most importantly, it gives him a posting aspect. Did not help him at the foul line. Unfortunately, he's got to play four on this DePaul team. He's really a three. But they're so, they can't get anything out of their post. They play point by committee and post by committee. Cook trying to lean in. Great job drawing contact. He will be shooting here in the opening minutes of the second half. Hit on top 28 to 22 in a clash inside the Big East. And neither Jerry Wainwright or the great John Cheney at Temple thought Butler to swat down on that. All you want to do is stay positioned. Butler with his first foul. Mike Cook, the 6'4 junior at the line. He's given him a whole new dimension. This kid was a high school point guard. He's a good passer. He was a prolific scorer at Eastern Carolina. On a transfer over, he's really assimilated into the team game and became a nice blender and an excellent post to the gray. Cook dips. And that one will fall for him. Very, very few foul shots in this one. Pitt is one for four. And DePaul just two for four from the line. Mejia trying to get started. Curry out high. Walker looking inside. Curry driving in a bit. Here's Green. He likes that spot along the baseline, but can't get it to fall. Gray is closing out so fast, he should put it on the floor and drive it. Cook lays it up on a hard move. Kendall. Nice job there by Levon Kendall. An excellent touch. The 6'10 senior out of Vancouver. A superb offensive rebounder. A nose for the ball. And when there are bodies there, he separates them. Set that pick. Weaving inside, got a good look, missed it. Gray triggering. Here comes Fields. The kick out for Graves. Had to cradle it, but the crowd wanted to walk there. Here's oh. Walker out in front. Gray actually wound up tapping it in. It looked like Wes Unsell on an outlet pass Green. It's a shame Green can't get his body fat down. He should go make a visit to Pat Riley. Look at Green with his outlet pass. That's unbelievable upper body straight because he really didn't have a knee bend to that either. Well, the layup was going in anyway, but Gray actually got a hand on on the deflection and it went through. Fields, quick move there, lays it up right handed this time for two. He does have a fast step. Either Mejia didn't push him into the pick or the pick wasn't called. Mejia gave his teammate a dirty look. I got a feeling the pick wasn't called. With Cook out to guard him. They're banging bodies. Fields nearly had the theft. Curry flying inside and winds up with the foul. He commits the charge. And we have a timeout with 15 27 left in this one. Pitt with the lead and coming up an encore of therapeutic proportions next. Levon Kendall. Uh, I'm going to play a song called Wandering Soul that my uh, father Simon Kendall wrote in the late 70s for my mom when he was trying to win her over. Well, speaking of uh, being a renaissance man,
man. You're looking at one right here, and he reminds me of the worm, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> now, I'll tell you something. You're seeing Rodman at the collegiate level when you're watching Kendall, and, you, and if there ever was a wandering soul whose dad could have dedicated that boy right there who just blocked out our cameraman. Yeah, I love the, uh, the piano accompaniment as well on Rodman. <laughs> how, <laughs> how appropriate, or maybe not, but... Well, he wasn't wearing his wedding dress. Thank God oh, for that. Oh, thank goodness for his small favors. Lamont growing up in... Vancouver, but he was named for American rock musician Levon Hellman. Started taking up piano as a young child, inspired by his dad more than anyone. His dad, Simon Kendall, a well-known keyboardist in Canada. If you want, if you don't like Rodman, he could remind you of Shane Battier because he is the ultimate blender. Makes everyone and everything around him better. DePaul in need of a stop to tighten it up some more here. They were down 10 at halftime. And Wainwright pulled a good ploy here. He went to zone. He wasn't going to contend against those misdirection plays or that post presence of pick. Cook bottle up inside. Tough move with the left hand. Won't go for him. DePaul gets that stop. Walker came flying out of there for the Blue Demons. Bird kicks into the corner for Clark. See, when we have that mismatch at Gray right now on that small, his teammates have got to spread out and give him space to drive. Here's Curry. Gray with the rebound, and the Panthers on the attack. Curry's got big heart, but he's a bankrupt shooter. He has total lack of confidence in the shot. You saw it there. 6'6", junior out of Brooklyn. Here's Kendall. Curry starting the offensive attack now. They have numbers. Three on two and fields there to pluck it away. Great anticipation. That was about anticipation, not quickness. And Gray finishes on the other end as Fields pushed the tempo to get the easy deuce. And the presence of mind to just throw that lob right up there. Jamie Dixon tried to get a time up, but the referee didn't look at him. That's why Jamie has a big grin on his face. He'll take the bucket gladly. Fields with six assists, by the way. So he is distributing very effectively. The lead bump back up to 35-26. Shot clock at 12. Mejia, so far only three points. Clark, corner jumper. And Pitt crashing that glass. Cook up top to Graves. Left open. Buried it. That's a three. And that's a timeout for DePaul. And he has a hot hand. Let's take a look here at Fields with this steal coming up. You're going to see how he's out there. And that's beautiful, his anticipation there. He did exactly what you do. He committed the ball, then got to the passing lane, presence the lob, and Gray scores. This telecast is available in stunning high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Now DePaul trying to keep their home court winning streak of nine in a row humming along but in serious jeopardy at the hands of number seven Pitt. Pitt with its biggest lead of the night and the Panthers have never trailed in the contest. It's been their game from the start. They began by setting the tempo in terms of how fast the game would be played and then they used that body bang defense. They bump the curl, they body out on the block out, they bang a cutter. And on a cold night in Chicago, temperatures in the 20s. Aaron Gray, you see him sweating hard, working hard for the Pitt Panthers. On the bench right now, DePaul with the ball here. See, the ball's all perimeter. They don't have any cuts for the basket. They don't have any post presence. So they're living and dying that jump shot. They run that shot clock down. It's at seven now. Burns trying to spin into the paint. The kick out, Chandler there. Too strong. Burns kept it alive. New shot clock. He won't wait. The leaner is a wild one. Great possession until that shot, and a good shot was missed by Chandler. He did have a good open look. It did not fall. It's been the story of the night from three-point land for the Blue Demons. Nothing's going. Kendall leans inside. This is the guy, the more you see him, the more you like him. I love that guy. He gets the Attaboy Award every game. I'll tell you what. Charges, deflections, steals. He makes the ex extends the entry pass out defensively. And he's just a team. You know, he knows how to play Robin the Batman. He plays great alongside Aaron Gray. And he covers the team's best four or five minutes. Pitt on a 7-0 run. Kendall helping out on that. 
with the basket moments ago. Here's Hurd, an ugly looking shot. Another three pointer that won't fall. The ball two out of 14 beyond that arc. And now it's starting to get away. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Ronald Ramon. So a rare break for the Blue Demons here in the second half, trailing by 14. Reese with a Sports Center in game update. Good game over on ESPN between Duke and Georgia Tech, and a great game for Rashawn Dick. Pulls up and hits from 17. He's got a game high 16 points. Yellow Jackets up by four. And we are counting down to Mario Chalmers, averaging almost 19 per his last four games. Kansas hosting Oklahoma State right after we're done in Chicago. Scott, thank you very much. Back here in Chicago, it's Pitt comfortably in command, at least right now, 40 to 26. And Pitt Panthers are really doing a job on big time scorers in the conference over the last three games, Rick Majerus. Go back to Demetrius Nichols of Syracuse University. He was the number one scorer in the Big East. Pitt really shut him down. They did it to Melvin Buckley of South Florida, the number two scorer in the conference over the weekend. Now Sammy Mejia, the number eight Big East scorer, and he has been held at just three points tonight. They rotate fresh blood on them. They play three or four guys through them. They make them dribble to a shot, and they do a terrific job of not letting them post, and then their help is deployed. Those four facets account for that defense that you just discussed. They hear out to Burns taking the baseline, the floater, maybe a lob. There's Green. He draws contact. He'll go to the line with 11.27 remaining. Sammy Mejia with just the one basket, averaging over 16 a game, but not a field goal since 11.06 remained in the first half. And the reason for that is they do a nice job of scouting report defense, but they do even a better job of having a defensive eye. The lowest man away from the ball is deployed right underneath the basket. The other guy is at the foul line. That's called the defensive eye. And what they do is they get help there earlier by being so far off to the ball, Dave. Pitt with their standout D, 14 and 2. Oh, and by the way, as a team, they shoot 40% from beyond the three point arc and about 50% overall. So Jamie Dixon's team does a lot of things awfully well. And this is done with a nine man rotation. And then you see like the Syracuse game where LeVance gets on fire. Now here's what I felt the Paul may want to do a little earlier. But they're in it now. One, two, two press. Benjamin trying to get out of it deep into the corner. And a timeout hit. Dixon did not want to give it up there. Very close to turning it over with 11-13 remaining in the game and up by a dozen. So Pitt takes the timeout. We're going to talk a little bit here about what makes Aaron Gray so special. Why he's one of 11 players with a double-double. Let's take a look at his mind. He's more determined to get it in the paint. He's got to be selfish. He's got to want the ball. He's doing that tonight. His eyes see the play early, easy, and he's an excellent, safe passer. His shoulders, the kid's a space eater. Posting, rebounding, he makes room for himself by virtue of that wide body. His hands are extraordinary. They're soft and supple to the catch. After it's there, they become like lobster claws. He doesn't lose it when he takes it back up. His feet are very quick. He has a quick first step and also a bit of a bounce for such a big body. Here's his Achilles heel, no pun intended. It's his legs. He's a willing runner, but a plotter. Transition is, transition is an area of concern. But I'll tell you, when you look at that body makeup, this kid's got a lot of it there. A willing runner, and now on the baseline. He'll be fouled here with 11 one to play great with 10 points and six rebounds thus far tonight. Well, all you need to do is look at the dichotomy of Jim and Green, who's an unwilling runner, a butler. You see, don't see those guys. This kid can't transition that well, but he tries the best he can. I'm talking about Gray, whereas Green loses himself. He gets the rebound, and he stays down on the court. Fields, his corner jump shot, too strong. Gray went for it and tipped it out of bounds. Isn't it hard to believe that was the same guy that five nights ago made those five threes against Syracuse? Could not miss in that contest and leading Pitt to a win on the Carrier Dome court. They've got their most infectious, enthusiastic, energized defender in the Clinkstales, the little point guard with the ball right now. 
Quick whistle here and a foul will go against DePaul away from the basketball and, and when they are getting a chance to put it up and Wainwright a little bit of a grin there they're missing everything no field goals in the last four minutes and 30 seconds Chandler by the way picking up his third foul there off the ball and DePaul has missed their last seven shots. Fields doubled up but got it away to Ramon. Fake by Young. He's their best athlete inside the Gray, their best player, and one of the best players in the Big East. And credit Gray with great deployment there. He saw that coming, anticipated it, and spotted up right where he knew there would be an opening. They turn it over as we go inside to Gray. Here we see Gray move away and underneath the zone. They lose him, and as the ball is being driven baseline, look how he deploys right there, and all of a sudden he's open. Credit Gray with making two moves and creating adequate spacing for the play to develop. Biggest lead of the night here for the Pitt Panthers. Fields trying to add to it, left wide open. Yeah, they are not falling for him tonight. Kendall hits the deck. It squibs out of bounds off him. That's what Kendall is. He's a vacuum cleaner on those boards, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, Kendall says, or Dixon says of Kendall, he may be the best all-around player we have, but he is certainly our best defender. He's also Gray's landlord. Did you know that? He owns the house that Gray lives in, and downstairs a band lives there. It helps him with his music. I grew up in a house like that. There was a band living in the basement. We had no idea who they were. They didn't pay any rent. Fields on the move. Can't lay it in. Gray is there. One dribble down. Can't get that one. Close range. And the foul will go against Pitt. But we saw him there as a willing runner. He got in that play nice. Fields is so active with his hands. He's always raking, digging. A lot of people talk about defending with your feet, and certainly that's an important component. But you want to have active hands. You want to be raking, digging the ball, stripping. And Fields is not doing a lot of scoring tonight, but he's doing everything else for the Pitt Panthers as they are on top here, 42-28. And that's the beauty of their team, their chemistry, their unselfishness, and their firepower across the board. Not to mention, but by playing nine guys, they have rested players. Link skills, that one clangs away, but Chandler there for the rebound. New shot clock here for the Blue Demons, but nothing is falling for them. Green to Mejia, didn't really expect that pass. He slashes in it, banks it off the glass. And that's what we've talked about coming out of the half, Dave. He's got to look for his own shot. He's got to create shots for himself, not force them. Just two out of seven, though. Sammy Mejia, one of the top scorers in the conference. That, his first field goal, since they're about 11 minutes to play in the first half. They have missed it. Gray pushes it up, sweet shot, one-handed on that baseline. Back up to 14 for Pitt. He gets it where and when he wants it. They've got to do a better job of playing him before he gets a catch. They've got 900 pounds of beef over there. Lorenzo Thompson getting ready to check in for Jerry Wainwright and DePaul, playing with a very heavy heart these days, certainly after losing his father to a stunning heart attack. At the age of 43, there's Gray low, and it'll spin on out. Kendall Fowler really digging for that rebound. They tie up, and the possession now goes the other way. Now that is all Panther basketball there. A deep catch by Gray, and all of a sudden Kendall comes in to act as a cleaner. I mean, he's just so much that, that Shane Battier, Rodman type player that exists for the good of the team. What, what we haven't seen tonight are, is how many screens this kid sets. He's all about team Kendall. Fifth year senior. The lob underneath, Mejia there. Maybe a little too close for Sammy. And a foul against the ball here with 7.47 to play. Timeout with Pitt on top, 44 to 30, as we go back to the studio and Scott Reese. All right, Dave, more Big East action. It's UConn and Marquette. The Huskies try not to lose for the third time in four games, and Hashim to beat. Big fella off glass and good. That ties the game at 32. The free throw puts UConn up one, but back and forth we go. Marquette up by two, under 16 to go. We'll keep you posted. Back to Allstate Arena after this.
Expect more from a value meal. Introducing Wendy's Crispy Chicken Deluxe with all white meat, bacon, and cheese, or the Double Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe with fries and a drink. For just $2.99 every day, do what tastes right. Discovery Channel. Firepower will be revealed Mondays at 9 p.m. Pitt with a number of guys who do a little bit of everything. It's a big reason they have a 14-point lead. Big guy, 6'10", senior Levon Kendall is one of those key men. And in an era of false bravado and sometimes fake toughness, here's the real deal. The offensive glass puts it back up. Now he drives the closeout. Body control in the air. Here we see him fighting again. And the anthropology major goes to the floor to dig it out. I just love this kid. As I said, he gets the coach's attaboy award every game. And so far, as you see his line, six points, three rebounds, an assist, a couple of steals, and a lot of floor burns as well. That's typical for Kendall. And he's also the landlord for Aaron Gray. In addition to being a caddy for him, and dad come to every single game that he plays regardless of where it is and here again tonight fields deep on the wing shot clock down to 15 for Pitt looking to add on to that lead fields nearly lost it out of bounds Michael and Sandy Gray Aaron's press we saw them up in the carrier dome and here they are now in Chicago to watch this seven foot son, the preseason Big East Player of the Year. One of their sons going to frequent flyer miles for when he turns pro. Biggs really hammering away at that glass, but taken away by DePaul. And the Blue Demons hoping for a late run here. In a game like this, Dave, and with Pitt's offense, a 12-point lead here is almost like, or a 14-point lead here is almost like a 24-point lead. Well, cut down to 11 now as Chandler drills the three. He had 24 points in their win over Wake Forest, so he's certainly capable. This is the point where they turned on the heat and got the comeback against Kansas. I'm not going to give up on him yet. Test, at least for the moment for the Pitt Panthers. Graves will swing it to Biggs. Working on Chandler. Spins into the lane. Gives it up. Shot clock at six. Graves short. Chandler with the board. Maybe some life here for the Blue Demons. Walker will swing it. Clink scales. Trying to make his move on Ramon, who's a very gritty defender, and just shut him down there. And your point on Ramon is so well taken for such a prolific shooter. And this kid is a classic jump shooter. He's an outstanding defender, Ramon. Chandler has to reach in to slow down Fields. He fouls him with 555 love. There aren't a handful of two men in the country that get down in their defensive stance and play off the ball defense as well as Ramon does. Ramon, a son of a longtime professional basketball player. His dad played in the Dominican Republic, Brazil, and in Argentina. His dad came to Pittsburgh this summer 
and for 10 days ran a boot camp, lived with his son, made other players come into the home with him, kept him on a curfew, and ran three a day. Let me underscore that three a day practice. Oh. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Four fouls on Chandler, incidentally. And Pitt maintaining an 11 point edge and the ball here. Pitt trying to go to 15 and 2. Well, they're playing small here, which is a good decision. There's no quickness to Paul, guys. The gray is back in. Shot clock at nine. See how long Pitt takes off the clock for possession here with his lead. Fields a little floater there, but contact, and he'll be shooting. Let that one fly with five seconds to go on the shot clock. Inside all state arena, just outside downtown Chicago. Great to have you along for a Big East Wednesday. Dave O'Brien alongside Coach Rick Majerus. Pit number seven. DePaul has a marquee win over number five Kansas back in early December, but we have not seen quite that team on the floor here tonight. Fields well, to the line. They're struggling this evening, but again, they struggle because they don't have a post presence out of their five spot. They really don't. They run the point guard by committee, and each of them brings something to the table. And if they cannot rally here in the last five minutes, will be the first time they have lost at home here at the All-State Arena this season. Burns pulling up his dribble. This Sammy Mejia, very quiet tonight offensively. It has done a job on him. Burns again. That'll rattle in. A three-pointer is good. And now it's a ten-point game. And DePaul is not dead and buried yet. And Pitt got away from the Remo there. They almost always make a shooter like him bounce. We saw that last week at Syracuse. Field slips. Almost lost it. Asked for a timeout and gets it. Timeout Pitt. At this juncture of the game, that was a heads-up call by the kid. You don't. You, the possession is much more important here with a 10-point lead in the ball. So 10-point lead for number seven Pitt. But DePaul still lurking here with 4.45 remaining. We talked about the Kansas upset. Sammy Mejia proving himself against the Jayhawks. He sparked a 14-0 run and tied it at 53 on that three-pointer with three minutes to go. He hit another three to give DePaul a three-point advantage. And the Blue Demons ran out the shot clock as time expired. 64-57, a big, big win over Kansas. That was back on December 2nd, and they trailed at the half, 26 to 17. Well, we had talked about point guard by committee and trailing at the half. They've got two guards in now, Walker and Clink Scales. Curry can't shoot it, but he's a tough as nails defender. Walker, the frost, is strong, is going to be a real good player, but he still suffers from freshman, freshman judgment issues. Clink Scales has really done a good job of getting them back in games with a great attitude. And an energetic defensive. What a great call on the timeout. And Gray flushes it down. The first hit field goal in four minutes. And mom and dad, eh, not exactly thrilled, but inside they're cheering. And who would make that pass other than Levon Kendall? The spin by Chandler trying to keep him close, and it falls for him. A 10 point lead again, 48 38. And talking about Kansas, they're up next against Oklahoma State, which should be a dandy. Stay right where you are. The high-low offense of Kansas. Now they shut Rush down in this building to Paul. You know, you wouldn't have thought that he was an All-American candidate. Cook on the baseline drive. Too short. Opening here for the Blue Demons. Curry working outside to Burns, and he gets it to go. And look out, here come the Blue Demons. They're down all of a sudden by just seven. This looks like Jayhawks revisited. It's almost scripted, the format. I wouldn't walk away from this one. Plenty of time, 340 left. I love the communication by Curry. I can hear him call it through the headphones. They push the ball in transition. Nice look ahead. Look at that beautiful pass by Clint Scales. Drives it, lays it off. It doesn't get any better than that. 
Draylon Burns knocking down the long distance shots. The closest to Paul has been in a long, long time. It's been bumping that lead up to 12 and 14, and then 12 and 14 again. And all of a sudden, DePaul is in the game. And incorrectly identified as Quick Steals, it's Jabari Curry. I want to give him credit because he is such a hard nosed defender. DePaul on a run. And Pitt in a little bit of trouble. Ramone gets it across midcourt. Gray. The ball swarming defensively. Shot clock at 14. Here's Gray. One step into the paint. Batted away from him and he's fouled with 317 left. Pitt's lead has been cut down to seven with more than three minutes to play here in Chicago. Disciplined investing. It isn't about star fund managers. At zero price, it's about experienced investment teams that stay the course. For each one five and 10 year period, 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. That's not good. I'm State Farm Agent Al Sicard, and this is a true story. They took everything, even the kids' uniforms. Coach had to stay with the truck. Al took him over to the mall. He got him new uniforms. He got him to the game just in time. But our coach didn't make it. So I grabbed the clipboard, and I coached. And they ended up winning the whole thing. He got him to play zone. I, I can't get him to play zone. Great service and great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor. State Farm! You really should take NyQuil for that cold. Oh. It'll relieve your symptoms and help you sleep. <sighs> Sorry. You'll sleep like a bear. <laughs> like a hibernating bear. You'll sleep like... Like before you sign us up for this reality show? Yeah. Give me that. NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever, best sleep you ever got with a cold medicine. And for nighttime sinus relief, try NyQuil Sinus. Monday. Oh, finishing. You can't stop. Super Tuesday. Up in the air. Oh, my goodness. ACC Wednesday. The Dukes are on fire. Each night, all season long, the field of battle changes, but never the fight for domination. Conference supremacy, what separates the leaders from the pack. Big Monday, Super Tuesday, ACC Wednesday. All season long, beginning at 7 on ESPN. Scott Reese back in the studio. Georgia Tech continuing to handle Duke, and they're doing it from downtown. Anthony Morrow connects the Jackets 7 of 10 from beyond the arc. The Devils 3 of 14, and that adds up to a 5-point Georgia Tech lead. Elsewhere, Marquette back and forth with UConn. Golden Eagles by 2, under 13 to play. But when James on is on, good news for the Cowboys. Curry averaging almost 19 a game. He will lead his team into Lawrence, Kansas to take on the Jayhawks next. Guys. And here at Allstate Arena, Pitt is in a little bit of trouble all of a sudden. Their 14-point lead down to seven. Raylon Burns is on fire. What's caused this is their up-tempo defense, but here's Burns, and he's getting that transition off a little bit of weave, draw, and kick, but he's also getting it off of defensive transition and offensive rebounds, low ball. Beautiful pass by Curry there. At this point in time, when you hear that guy call for it, he's spotted up. If you want to play, a good point guard plays with the hot hand. Curious that Burns is out of the game at the point where he is hottest. Three for three from beyond the three-point line. Gray with his first free throw of the night. We talked about how precious few he has shot in the last three games. Hit up 49-41, 17 for Gray. For the season, not a good foul shooter, but that's been the case throughout his career, but looked pretty smooth on that pair. The bigger criticism is he doesn't get there enough. Good big gets a third of his points at the three throw line. He's getting about 17% there. Ah! 
So a nine point game coming up on the three minute mark. Curry way outside. Burns has come to the scorer's table. He's getting ready to check back in for Jerry Wainwright. And he had nearly lost it. Walker spots up. Too strong. And Cook grabs the rebound for the Panthers. And once again, they'll run clock now. Time to score is more important. With three seniors, three juniors, three sophomores, this pit team is veteran. Strong move by Cook. He'll be shooting here with 2.35 to play. And Burns dying to get back in. Where he has been warming up beyond the three-point arc. A point guard in high school, a recruited walk-on by Pitt, then transferred from East Carolina. He's been a welcome addition to a team that returns four or five starters. Chandler has fouled out. That was number five on Wilson Chandler, the sophomore out of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Fouling out with five points and sending Cook to the strike. And credit Pitt's defense with that. They made him dribble to a shot. They didn't allow him to post. They extended his catch out by denial. Cook at the line. His mom is the real star of the Cook family. Still ranks as one of the finest rebounders ever to play at Temple. 52 to 41. Was that the last best shot for the Blue Demons? Mejia spinning. The kick out. Here's Burns. Not this time. Rebound tip to Cook. Along that line, able to keep it alive. Great look there to Fields for the easy two. Right off the dribble. So Fields, six rebounds, six assists, and Pitt on a 6 nothing run. That finally comes to an end. Timeout, DePaul. Not much offense from Sammy Mejia tonight, but moments ago, how about the look from Cook to Fields? And it comes off the dribble here. Cook, look at how he gets the ball under control, keeps his eyes up, and he gives a little bit of a look away with a nice bounce pass there. So the lead back to 10. Hey, college basketball presented by KFC is on ABC Saturday at 3.30 with regional coverage. See either Tyler Hansbro and number one North Carolina taking on the Virginia Tech Hokies or the Oklahoma Sooners facing Texas. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Kind of hard to believe the last time North Carolina was number one in the polls was February 18, 2001, when they had an 18-game winning streak under Matt Doherty in his first season as the Tar Heels head coach. I would not have believed that. And you could have gotten me on a trivia question. And I never, long. I never stump you on the trivia. No, I'm not very good on the basketball trivia. I wasn't talking about basketball. Oh. But your football <laughs> stuff, your NFL, your Major League Baseball, you are lights out, Kendall. Back up top to field to run some more clock. Pit in command. Clock, spacing, ball movement. It's a simple formula. Shot clock at nine. Fields looks like Khalid Alamine to me. And he feeds Cook for two. And there's the dagger in the heart. And Fields, the man to get the pass inside. And that's seven assists for Levance Fields. And a good night dishing it. And he is backing down. It falls for him. And another timeout for Wainwright. Timeout to Paul with a minute 15 to go. Fields needed to be this assertive the first half. Nice job. And you mentioned Elamine and the comparison with LeVance Fields. See if it holds up. I think it does. Both these guys are very strong, can go to either hand, finish in traffic, get body contact by getting to the paint, make their three throws and run the team with fours. The only difference, one comes from New York City, Fields, and the other one comes from St. Paul, Minnesota, but has a New York City game to his element. Delamain said the UConn single season scoring record is a freshman. He was a member of the 99 team that won the NCAA title for the Huskies. Averaged about 15 points a game, more of a scorer. And selected by the Bulls in the second round of the 2000 draft. This pit team's well conditioned. Ramon's dad did a nice job with him in the three days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they say that now. <laughs> 
turned over into the corner. Walker to the baseline, and he'll be shooting. Pitt right now 14 and 2, and ranked number seven in the country is Jamie Dixon's upcoming schedule and a tough string of games. Well, you're looking at Georgetown, which will be very difficult with Hibbert and Green. Although they have been a little bit mercurial, as has DePaul. You know, the nice thing about Pitt is consistency, and the consistency comes from shot selection and defense. Connecticut Marquette going to be two very difficult games. We've got a great game with Marquette and West Virginia on Saturday coming up. See Dominique James and company. Marquette, by the way, still beating UConn. We're up by two at the moment. And you and I continue on the road in the Big East, and a Saturday tilt. West Virginia and Marquette should be a terrific game. 54 seconds remaining here. Uh, Jamie Dixon about to bring his team to 15 and 2 at the expense of Jerry Wainwright. DePaul about to dip to 10 and 7 and 1 and 2 in the conference. West Virginia lost four starters who thought they'd be where they are, ranked 21 in the country. Notre Dame, absolutely no one had them back. They were dead and buried. They've done a terrific job and have terrific wins against Alabama. Um, Providence. Starts out 2 and 0 with a yep. nice win over Marquette the other night. 12 and 3 overall. Providence a surprise certainly in the conference. A Ten point game here. Mejia shaking and baking to the baseline. Heard will lay it up and in. But just too little, too late. They had cut it to seven. I'm amazed at how well they play with nine players in that rotation pit. How cohesive it is. 35 seconds remaining. It will look at the top 25 by conference coming up. Pac-10 with five teams. You notice the absence of the Big Ten with only two. The ACC and Southeast have four there. The Big Ten is a two-team race. It's Wisconsin and Ohio State. Probably pulling up. And then anyone from three to eight, anybody could finish from three to eight with the exception perhaps of Penn State, Minnesota, and Northwestern. And the Pac-10, a great year for that conference. Moses will check back in for Wainwright here. And Hurd will step out. So the final seconds here at All-State Arena and DePaul getting ready to taste a defeat on the home court for the first time this season. Pitt was predicted to be the preseason champ. They look like the preseason champ this evening. And one of the reasons is they have good shot selection. They play sound defense. They have ball movement, player movement, and spacing. Those are the components to victory. So Pitt 15 and 2. And they come to DePaul tonight, just outside Chicago, and pick up a 10-point win over the Blue Demons final score, 59 to 49. Next on ESPN2, it's number 10 Oklahoma State at number six Kansas. For more on our game, we'll be on ESPN News in just a moment to wrap things up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Along with Rick Majerus, I'm Dave O'Brien as we say good night from Chicago. Thanks so much for watching. And again, your final score. Number seven pit in the win column over to Paul, 59 to 49. Now, back to Scott Reese.